episode of our Singularity training. So you should be seeing the uh, web page here on the right, containers and images. And now we're finally getting our hands dirty. We're finally going to run some containers here. So the questions that we address here is like, how do we pull Singularity images from the uh, official libraries? And how do we then uh, run commands inside of them? So first thing is, so we're just going to check that you have Singularity installed or Aptainer installed, just running Singularity dash dash help. So that will also work if you have Aptena installed, the command Singularity will still work. Let's type that, just help. And you see that it prints out a whole bunch of text with the different options that are available. If it just shows command not found, it means you don't have access to Singularity right now. Please head back to the setup instructions here and either find yourself a uh, cluster where it's already installed. I think that's even our preferred method there because that's where you're gonna use it in the end. Um, or if you are on a Linux system or use WSL on Windows, um, you can install it uh, either if you have root access, then it's pretty easy. If not, you have to try around a bit more. Uh, if it does not work, please come talk to us. So back to the uh, chapter. So I now assume that you can call singularity help and it works. The first thing we're going to tackle is downloading images from the officially available libraries. And here there's basically online repositories that list a lot of images uh, have been created by other users. And the first thing that we're going to do is add another remote. So that's basically a repository of these images uh, by running this first uh, command here. So that's singularity remote add no login Celebs cloud cloud dot io. Okay, it's going to confirm that, and then we tell it to also actually use that remote with Singularity Remote Use Philips Cloud. Cloud, right? It's going to confirm again. And so we can already print out all of the images that are uh, provided by that remote by simply typing Singularity Remote List. Oh, sorry, that's not the images that are being provided, that's the um, remotes that we've added. So we see the default remote uh, that was already present before we uh, ran any of the commands. And now we just uh, added the Celebs Cloud uh, with these two uh, commands that we um, ran, or specifically with the first one. And you see that there's an active com and the one that we set to use with Singularity Remote Use. Uh, is set to active, yes. All right, now we finally uh, list um, or, or search through this uh, online database, Singularity Search. So we're going to search for images that are called CentOS 7 something. So Singularity Search CentOS 7. And this command on this system actually runs for almost a minute. So I'm just going to abort that right now with Control C. Um, but if you run that after a minute, it should just print out like a very long list of uh, available images. And there's some shown here. You'll, you'll get some, some output like that. Um, and if you already know like uh, what, what image you're searching for, uh, you can simply find the exact name of that command. But for now, uh, we'll just go on to pick one of them for you, CentOS 7 devil, um, with, a, with a certain prefix here, setting the exact version, um, or the origin of that image. And we're gonna download that image uh, onto our computer. So go to any kind of working directory that you wanna use. So I'm just gonna create a temporary directory, singularity training. I'm going to CD there, and then I'll run the singularity pull command. So singularity pull, and I'm just copying the file name here. And this will download around 300 megabytes of data uh, for that image. So uh, you might see some progress bar, but because I already uh, ran through this uh, before, 
it's now using a cached image, so um, cached what was downloaded before. And if you do ls, you see that we now have a .zif um, file here, that's the image. You can check how large it is with du minus, minus h. So that's half a gigabyte of data here. So um, you can also add um, URLs to that command, singularity pull, and you can even use any kind of Docker image uh, that you find. So for example, you could also call singularity pull and then prefix it with uh, Docker and uh, specify the path there. That also just runs perfectly. In the container, so it's still here, and we just run it or open it or open a shell inside of it by typing singularity shell and then the name of the container. So singularity shell, center seven. And once we do that, it completes instantaneously, and you see that your prompt has been changed to singularity. So um, we can do a couple of things just to understand what's going on. Um, for example, we can call ID. So that tells us about the user. Right now that's KL5675. That's uh, my name on the Princeton servers. And also shows us the groups as in user groups that we've been added to, uh, which govern which permissions we have. And if we exit this uh, with exit or hitting Control D, and you run the same command, you see that this shows pretty much the same thing. So again, same username and also the same groups with the same permissions. So that means that inside of this container, we have the same permissions as outside of it. So when we were inside of it, and anything we ran inside of it um, was exited with uh, the within the CentOS 7. Uh, image. So the next thing we need to cover or talk about are bound directories. So if I uh, run the container again with singularity shell um, and I just type ls, you see that I can still see the same files as outside of the container. So because I was in the working directory that only included the singularity image, the center 7 thing, um, and now I'm inside of the container, but it still sees that. So that shows that this outside directory is somehow mounted inside of it. And in fact, there's uh, three directories that are always mounted by default. So that's um, slash temp. So if you go there, uh, which holds temporary um, files on the whole server, then the home directory uh, of myself uh, as a user. So if I go to my home and type ls, uh, you see the, the um, files that I just have at the in the server. So there's the documents file. I have like a miniconda, executable, and so on. And uh, lastly, the working directory um, that I've been calling Singularity from. So all of these um, are mounted by default. So you can also mount additional directories if you, for example, need access to, let's say, you need CVMFS inside of the container. And we can simply um, um, bind this as well, so mount it inside of the container. And you do that with the singularity shell dash dash bind option. So on this server, I don't have CVMFS, um, but you can also just uh, use any kind of um, other directory um, that you can think of that's not already on the uh, user. So what we can use is uh, here is uh, slash opt, which contains some uh, third party software usually, um, and just bind that inside of the um, container. So let's do it again, singularity shell, just bind, and then you see that there's first path and then a colon and a second path. So the first path is what I want to mount. Um, uh, let's call it let's say opt here, um, and then give it a name where we want to mount it to. Uh, so either the same thing, but it probably already exists in the container. So let's use um, slash mount MNT, just as a name we, we think of. So it's important that both of these are absolute paths. Um, we have a whole uh, chapter on just mounting um, 
uh, directories inside of your uh, container later. Um, but right now this uh, should work for you. So we run this and now I can go to slash mount and I see that there's some uh, third party uh, software things in there, like from AMD, from Dell and so on. All right, so that's the same that's, that was done here, only that they used uh, CVMFS. So um, just another thing um, we probably already pointed out, um, you can also start um, singularity uh, images uh, with a URL, for example, like this. Um, so if you haven't run that before, it would also download um, this uh, image first from that Docker URL and then directly drop you uh, into the shell here. Right, so let's uh, exit that again. Okay, so you can always, of course, get the shell now inside of the container and you can start executing things in there. The other thing that we can also do if um, we just directly want to execute uh, a command is uh, to use singularity exec. So let's say singularity exec and then it's name of the container. So let me just uh, copy that. So that's a container, a Docker container that contains um, the latest version of the root project. And then as an argument after that, I just put whatever command I want to execute within the container. So here that's root dash b. So again, it's using a cached image. Uh, if you run it for the first time, it probably downloads that image first. And you see that then uh, drops me into the uh, root um, environment that you're probably um, familiar with. So you can do something like uh, dot demo. Okay, well, I can't do that in batch mode. Um, but anyway, you can uh, create your histograms or whatever, and then uh, quit again um, with uh, control D or dot Q. Uh, and you see that it closes the container afterwards. All right, so as a quick exercise, and that's going to just wrap up this lesson. Now, and that's pretty simple actually, uh, again, use the same Docker image of root, but this time instead of executing a root, um, just confirm it can also run PyRoot. So start Python um, and verify that you can import root. So if you want to do that exercise, please pause the video now. I'm going to wait five seconds and then I'm going to show you how it's done. Right, hope you already figured it out yourself. So uh, the way we do that is uh, we bring up the last command, so singularity exec and then the docker path. But now uh, rather than calling a root minus b, just call uh, Python 3. So once I hit enter, that will start Python 3 inside of the container. Um, now I see that I'm in a Python shell and you can verify I can import root, which takes a while. Yes, and now I have it. And if you want, you can, of course, um, create your uh, favorite histogram um, and you can see that that works. So quit again with control D or quit parentheses um, and you're back. And if you want, you can also confirm that here, for example, I did not have a root outside of um, the container. So this really only works because I had the uh, container available here. All right. See you uh, in the next episode.